Now we got fish number two. <laughs> That's a toad. <laughs> well, what is up, fisher people? If you watched that last video about uh, planning a fishing trip with the Omnia fishing app, you'll know that I am on Lake Mille Lacs. And in that video, we got into a good, uh, good jigging bite. Pitching jigs and minnows first cast. <laughs> Holy cow. So for this video, I'm starting at the same spot that I was in that video to see if they're still chowing jigs. And uh, they are. And I'm going to run down kind of what I've been doing to find these fish, to catch these fish, how Malax and a lot of these natural clear water lakes fish is differently from what I'm used to in Lake Sakakawea. And hopefully just catch a bunch of walleyes and find a handful of, oh, we left that minnow. Look at that. Find a handful of good spots using that Omnia fishing app, but it's a uh, man. If they're still gonna be biting here, it's kind of hard to leave. <laughs> What's different about the jigging here compared to what I and maybe you are used to on Lake Sakakawea is this lake is super, super clear. So the fact that it's cloudy today really helps for one thing. The fact that it's November makes them hungry. I lengthened my leader. I don't know if this is overkill or not, but I put a 10 pound leader on. And the next thing that I was curious about was, do I need monofilament, lighter monofilament, or can I get by with fluorocarbon like I like to use? And the answer to that is, oh, I pulled it right out of his mouth. The answer to that is, I'm using 12 pound fluoro and I've just been getting bit like crazy. So the 12 pound fluoro is nice because it helps with bigger fish, but it also helps with the rocks that I'm jigging through here and helps deal with the zebra mussels that are in this lake. So fluorocarbon it is. I would imagine if you came out here though, you know, in May and we're jigging, same as Sakaka, we, it'd be nice to use some lighter six, eight pound monofilament. That's a little bit of a bigger, so they got rainbows out here is what they call them. I don't know if they're rainbow chubs for minnows or what it is, but they call them rainbows. And uh, that one's a little bigger. So if I get a bite, I might let them chomp on it. And that's another thing I want to talk about here, but the 12 pound fluorocarbon is working. I got the braid on so I can still detect bites pretty well. But whether it's this lake or whether it's just the fact that the water temp is 41 degrees, it's November, every once in a while, I've gotten a good thump bite and I just set the hook immediately. But a lot of times it just gets heavy all of a sudden. They pick up it up off the bot, they pick it up off the bottom. And when they do that, then I basically just kind of lean into them, feel if there's pressure there. And if there's weight and pressure and the fish starts moving and I know it's a fish, I set the hook. Oh, I think that was a pickup. It got heavy, unless it's a rock. And if it was a fish, he dropped it. So that's the other thing that's been happening here. And I don't know if it's a clear water thing or a cold water thing, but they've gotten real touchy. So no, that's why normally when I get that thump, I like to set the hook right away because I don't want a fish to spit it. But every once in a while, they've just picked it up off the bottom. That felt like another ticky bite, unless it was a rock. They picked it up off the bottom. And then the pressure that I put into them causes them to spit it. Or sometimes I set the hook and they still don't have it. So it's been a game of figuring out when to set the hook. The walleye won that game. But anyway, the type of spots that I'm fishing. So per the Omnia fishing reports, the deal was kind of like either weeds or rocks or sand. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> like ideally transition spots on one of those in like seven to 11 feet. But then there was a big cold front. I came through, it snowed yesterday, it snowed this morning. I was fishing in the snow for a little bit in the morning. I think that pushed the fish a little deeper. So I wound up looking for kind of similar spots, but just going a little bit deeper, a little off the break in about 15, 16 feet of water. 
the boat's in 15 right now. I'm getting a few casting into maybe 14 and a few casting into maybe 16. But they're hanging around the perimeter of that rock sand transition. And I'm gonna see, once I get tired of catching the fish in this spot, I wanna see if I can find some other spots that mimic this. The wind's starting to die down a little bit. I'm curious to see if that's gonna kill this bite. Oh! My leader line eventually broke. So that is, huh, here's a tip. When I get high. There can be problems with having a 10 foot leader because obviously it gets inside your eyelets and you're casting it through the eyelet so many times. I don't know how else to do it because you can't have 10 foot of line out and hoist a cast. So eventually that thing just got worn out and my leader broke. One thing I might do is see, do I really need a 10 foot leader? Can I get a get by with like a six footer? Maybe that's the next thing I do. I'm gonna cast a six foot leader, see if I still get bit. If I do, then I know I don't have to tie such a massive leader and then I can avoid that problem. This also has a different color of jig head. More variables than I'd like, but that's only, that's only like a four foot leader. Let's try it. Can we catch them on a four foot leader? If we do, then the world's our oyster, you know what I mean? Let it ride. Different color, shorter leader, still catching fish, that'd be great. If not, then I'm gonna have to look to uh, retying all of them tonight. Shouldn't have turned off the camera. My next cast, I hooked up with the shorter leader and the different color of jig. There are just so many walleyes that are like 19 to 22 inches on this lake, which I suppose it makes sense given their slot limits. But I didn't expect the fish out here to be so beefy. I mean, it is November and fall and all that, but something about me made me think Mille Lacs walleyes were going to be skinnier than Sakaka wheel walleyes. And uh, that's probably a little true, but these fish are plenty thick and eating plenty well and fight plenty good. So we answered a couple questions with that fish. One, does the color of jig head matter? Well, perhaps not. Two, does the leader length matter? Well, perhaps not. So that's my leader length right there. You can see there's the braid and there's the, the 12 pound fluoro. And that fish gulped it just as good as the rest of them. So I will say that it potentially helps that it's nice and cloudy today. Maybe on a brighter, sunnier day, that leader length might be more important. But here's the other thing I don't know is if I would have fished that leader length the whole time that I've been on that spot, on this spot, how would it have performed? I don't know that answer. We're learning things quickly, but it's all been from one good spot here. So. At some point I'll have, I'll get my fix and then we'll go do some search in here. All right, we're trying to duplicate spot number one. And basically what I'm noticing is that as you cruise down along any of these shoreline related structures, so I'm not like anywhere near being able to cast onto the shoreline, but any piece of structure that's directly connected as a highway to the shoreline. In this case, it's kind of a big flat that extends out from the shore. And then around the edges of it, there's a, there's a reef on the end of the flat and the edges have a break line that drops down to 15 feet of water. So I'm just finding like little bumps and little points and then hitting that 15 foot mark. And it seems like every one that I look at it's just loaded with fish on side imaging. Whether or not they're all in the same mood is the first spot, I don't know. Whether or not, you know, I haven't gotten a feel for what kind of bite windows do we have here and all that kind of stuff. I don't know that answer yet, so I don't know if we're going to catch a pile of fish on this one too, but... And I'm sure on certain days they'll be up in 8 to 10 feet of water. And then you get cold fronts like this and they might drop down on the edge into 15 to 18 feet of water. Today's one of those days, which makes sense. They love those transition zones. And that's where like when you get that, that break, like that's where you're gonna have that transition 
from rock to sand or mud probably. There's a pile of fish moving to the right. We must be moving out of their active window here. They're not crushing. Got him. Got him. That was a good thump bite right under the boat. <laughs> Feisty little sucker. I mean, he's not that little, but he's not as big as some of them that I've been catching. But he's just as thick as most of them. The bite slowed down a little bit for sure later here in the afternoon but but i can still see just as many cruising around in these same little areas at any rate i think i'm going to scout out some other things in preparation for where the wind's going to be the next because the wind's going to switch i'm going to have to fish a different area of the lake the next couple of days probably but uh we might continue this video tomorrow you know i think the hardest thing about fishing mille Lacs right now is just finding a place to launch your boat safely. Day two, I am 0 for 2 in rock avoidance at ramps. The water levels are down a little bit from normal apparently and the ramps didn't have a lot of water in them to begin with so we're gonna overcome though. We got our feet wet yesterday. We got some nice fish in one area. I'm on the opposite side of the lake today. Going to try to put together a pattern over here too. Well, I only got like halfway to the mouth of this bay and there's a little reef on the edge. Another one of them, you know, rock to sand transitions that we were fishing yesterday. And it sure looks like there's fish lined up on the edge of this thing. So uh, let's see if we can catch some eyes in the bay here. I'm on the south end of the lake because we got some south wind and and yeah, it gets rough on Sakakawea where I'm used to fishing too. But uh, Mille Lacs is a lot more open and also shallower. So it gets some pretty big rollers. So, and for anybody that this is the first time watching my channel, I, spend 90% of my time fishing and guiding on Lake Sakakawea, which is the reservoir on the Missouri River. I am a reservoir dog, but I want to do a little natural lake fishing here for something different for my potentially last open water trip of the season. It is second week in November here. The water is 39 degrees right here. It was 41 most everywhere I went yesterday, so that is quite different. Maybe just because we're so closer to the shallow part of this bay and it's just way cool. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Came a little further out of the bay, slightly warmer water, like a half degree warmer. And what I don't know yet, like my first day yesterday, I didn't really start catching fish till afternoon, but I don't know if that's a pattern or just a matter of me not figuring it out till then. So that's what I'm struggling with now is like fishing these spots right here. Am I not catching fish because they're just not going yet? Or am I in the wrong spot? You know what I mean? Whereas if you've been here before and you know, yeah, these fish, they'll come on in a couple hours, they'll come back. It gives you a huge advantage for the time being. My game plan is if I don't get bit in three or four casts to keep moving, because it's good for me to see more of the water anyway, you know? change jig colors, move spots, work it slower. What do you think? What do I do? Help this reservoir dog figure this out. Whew. I felt the need to get out of the wind a little bit. If for no other reason than my own and my own sanity, but I seem to be a uh, marking fish on this little sandy point in this bay. We need to get something to bite. That's what we need. We need biting fish real quick. Is that a fish? 
that fish let it go. Oh, got him. He came back. He came back. Oh, what is he? What is he? What is he? It's a walleye. We found some. We found some. When you get them first cast, that's when you know. Come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, goodness. My old friend, the sand again. We've been working that south end of the lake all morning on the rocks. And I finally worked my way far enough north to find a good old sandy bay. This guy got the jig threaded through him. I'm going to take care of this, but fish. So I do know there are a lot of fish in this lake, but at the same time, there are so many places they could be that there is a lot of dead water, a ton of dead water. And also, I think it's possible that this time of year, the fish school up pretty heavily too. So when they decide to be somewhere, they're all somewhere. Well, obviously, but you know what I mean? Like they're just dead spot, dead spot, dead spot, dead spot, dead spot. Oh, mother load. I'm sitting here and 16 feet so again like all the reports lately had been like this 10 to 12 even eight foot of water stuff and that's just not what i'm finding well at least i mean i'm marking fish in those type of spots but i'm not getting bit in those areas all the biters for me have been like 14 to 16 feet so far so i don't know here's a fish on the left side of the graph 129 although i realized i have to adjust my hummingbird for daylight saving it's not 129 it's 1229 i feel like i put in way more work to find fish today than yesterday too although we don't have fish number two here yet so better not get too excited now we got fish number two now we got fish number two. Ooh, is that a little bigger? Ooh, that looks like a large walleye, folks. <laughs> Stay button. Stay button. Oh, I should maybe think about getting my bigger net. I should maybe think about getting the bigger net. That is a nice, nice fish. Thumped it real good thumped her real good. I'll get a bigger net so I got some room for air. That is a toad. That's a toad! <laughs> oh, when you find some active walleyes on this lake, this is so much fun. But it takes so much work to find them, it seems like. They're so concentrated, so incredibly concentrated. <laughs> but that fish has got some shoulders, 25 inches. I think at 25 inches long, that's my biggest Minnesota menace. Can I talk? That's my biggest Minnesota walleye I've ever caught. I haven't done a ton of Minnesota walleye fishing. Look at that. That is a beauty. And again, I looked around a little bit on that Omnia fishing app. Cause like yesterday, I was like, I want to find some sandier stuff. So I wanted to see how far I needed to go before I could find more of a predominantly sandy bottom. A little less of the bright, hard returns and something a little softer. All these fish that I'm finding are on sand on the edge of rock. All these fish that I'm finding 
are on sand on the edge of rock. You got some of the brighter red stuff that fades out into more lighter stuff close to yellow. Yellow would be more of a muddy bottom close to yellow. So when you find the change in color, that's what you're looking for. I just wish I knew if it was, this is the first spot that I like found walleyes on, or this is the first spot that there's been walleyes feeding. You know what? I was wrong. That was not my biggest Minnesota walleye. I caught a bigger one on Leech Lake. I got that on the video when we were trying to musky fish and sucked at it. If you want to see some old school Blumendahl fishing videos, uh, yeah, go back a few, four or five years ago. I got a video from Lax. I got a video from Leech Lake about saving the busted musky trip. Good fish, but the video editing's come, I like to think has come a fair ways since then. Not that I'm the best video editor in the world now, but I think I've improved. It is nasty cold out here, that wind. Whew. It's supposed to be nicer than yesterday. It is not. Got him. There, we finally got another one to go. That fish came back to it three times. That was crazy. Crazy. And that's 16, 17 foot of water out there probably. Maybe there'll be another little flurry of activity here. Man, that fish is just dog and feisty. Feisty wallies here. Holy cow. Let's put a net on that thing, huh? No quitting those things. I don't know if it's just the time of year or if that's the way these fish are all the time, but they are just fierce. Holy cow. Fierce fish. I love it. Oh, my hands are freezing. <laughs> Got him that time. Got him. A thumbnail picture. I was so close. That one's got it. That's probably another Malax Walter right there. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Another big one. 